This is a very brief update on the MK Area Calculator. You may recall this was an electrical gadget from the 1950s that uses a stylus to count grid crossings and find the area of any shape on paper. Maybe check that one out if you haven't seen it. I had to make my own grid because I've never seen an original one. And I had to make my own the rest of it too because mine is broken. The M and the K were the inventors, Roy Kirkendall and Warren Martin. Maybe you remember that Roy ran a radio and TV repair shop and Warren Martin married Roy's daughter, Mary Gale. Martin and Kirkendall never made any other products, although there was that patent for the periscope pea shooter. Anyway, my video about the MK area calculator somehow caught the attention of the family. And a couple weeks ago, I received an email from Bob Martin son of Warren Martin and grandson of Roy Kirkendall. What I really like about this thing is that it was a totally original idea that was just made by some guy or two guys. They had a weird idea like lots of people do but they actually made it and sold it and somehow in the drifting sands of time it ended up here in my basement. This thing is almost totally forgotten by the world and when I play around with it and learn about it I like to think that I'm reconnecting in a way with the men behind it. I don't know them, but they love this thing, and I love it too in my own way. So it's very rewarding for me to hear from the actual people who knew and loved these guys. To know that they appreciate my silly videos, it means a lot. Anyway, Mr. Bob Martin very kindly sent me some more information about the MK Area Calculator. I got seven things to share. Roy's name is pronounced Kirkendall, not Kikendall. I said Kikendall in my first video, but it's Kirkendall, sorry. I've never seen a real original MK grid. I've never even seen a photo of one. And even Bob Martin couldn't send me a photo. So I've still never seen one. Anyone out there watching this, if you got one, I want to see it. The original one was like mine on a flexible sheet of transparent plastic. But theirs had electroplated copper strips on it. Bob tells me that electroplating onto thin, flexible materials was a major challenge for them back then. All the engineers told them it had never been done before, so Roy and Warren just did it themselves in their own shop. Bob says he has some original blank ones without the copper on them, but no finished ones. The MK area calculator is based on the same idea as dot counting to find areas. Warren Martin actually worked as a prospector for the Atomic Energy Commission in the early 50s and he did some surveying projects that required lots of tedious dot counting. That's where he got the idea for this thing. Apparently they had some vague plans in the 1970s to build what Bob called a Green's Theorem design. This sounds like something apparently based on the polar planimeter which measures an area by going around the outer edge. Very interesting idea, but I really can't imagine what the concept would have been. How could you make an electric grid-based polar planimeter? I'm not sure. Maybe the idea was just completely different. Of course, Bob has used an original one of these back in the day. He says it worked great, and he was sure to point out that the speed was quite sufficient. I think this is a polite rebuttal to the harsh criticism that I shared from this old book, which said that the MK was slow and unreliable. Bob says that they used a solenoid counter, not a motorized one like I said in my old video. Sorry about that. Bob says the counter could handle 25 impulses per second. That's plenty fast. Now I don't know who to believe. I'm very pleased to present the MK Area Calculator Official Instructions Manual. Hit the links down there if you want to download this yourself. Very clean design. Nice diagram. Hey, did that horrible lying defamatory book steal their diagram? Here's my favorite part. The MK Area Calculator system uses a low voltage current through the grid printed circuit. I love that through. While it is safe to the operator at all times, the operator may occasionally feel a slight tingle in the fingertips. You gotta keep that thing out of the bathtub. Bob also sent me some advertisements that they ran in magazines at the time. Here's a little one from some kind of electronics catalog. Here's another one with some more words and it says it's made by the Martin Kirkendall Company. And here's a full page ad. Actually this might be a real photograph of a real grid. It tells you how it works. It's got details about the grids. There were three different ones available. The finest grid was 100 squares to the square inch. That's much finer than mine. Comes with a pint can of MK2938 grid cleaner. Nice.
I think we all know what we're really hoping for, and I must admit, as soon as I realized who I was talking to, my mind was fixed on one thing, and Bob knew it too. He was the primary product tester for the prototype of the combination periscope pea shooter. Bob says it was pretty fun, but not terribly accurate. Unfortunately, he doesn't have the prototype anymore, and it was never sold commercially. They did a fair amount of development, but this was just around the beginning of the push for safety in kids' toys, and pea shooters were the first to go. But don't worry, folks. It gave me great pleasure to learn that they did produce a marketing flyer, the Spy N Shoot. I love the graphics on this thing. Look at that submarine and the ship, and that elderly kid using it. Is that K in his ear a reference to the inventor? I liked him so much I made a full version. Look at that quotes on the box, but hyphens up here. Huh. It sells for 98 cents, but it's only 38 cents if you buy 7,000 of them. Man, times have changed. Thanks for the memories, Bob. Mm -hmm.